What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. In this video, we will discuss the importance of IT security documentation, the compliance requirement, and how IT governance strategy is linked with the business strategy. But as usual, before we start, a free way to support the channel is by subscribing to help the channel grow. And also do remember to like and hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new video. All right, let's get rolling. Security policy. An IT security policy is a set of rules and requirements designed to ensure all users, computers, and networks within an organization meet a minimum IT security and data protection requirements. IT security policy describes information security objectives and strategy of an agency or an organization. It is an overview or the generalization of an information security needs. So the purpose of an IT security policy is they specify requirements and define the roles and responsibility of everyone within the organization and the expected behavior in various situations as well as the consequences of non-compliance. Information security policies are the primary element of cybersecurity and IT governance. Policy must be properly created, accepted and validated by the board and executive management before being communicated throughout the organization for use. Policy and every compliance document should have a formal process of being created, reviewed, and updated, and approved. There may be some legitimate need for an exception to a policy. Therefore, a clear process of how an exception is approved and monitored is necessary. So policies communicate required and prohibited activities and behaviors at a high level in a nutshell. And the takeaway here is that the security policies are mandatory compliance requirement. So now let's look at security standard. Security standard is the document that interprets the security policy in the specific situations. They define compulsory requirements for the homogeneous use of hardware, software, and technology, and security controls. To explain this further, when the policy calls for a particular use of hardware, such as a laptop instead of what, a desktop, maybe the organization uh, you know, decided to move away from uh, uh, the traditional desktop, you know, workstation to a laptop. The policy will be the high level statement coming 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 down from the management that we're moving away from desktop to laptops. That will be the policy. So now the standard will explain the requirement in terms of what kind of laptops the organization will be selecting. That is the brand, the memory capacity, the hardware disk type such as the SSD or the solid state drive versus the traditional magnetic tape drive and also the processor type so you see the policy is the high level statement coming in from the management we are moving away from a desktop to a laptop workstation so when you work within an organization you see that if they're using a laptop the laptop is the specific brand across the organization those are all defined or called in the standard so standards provide a course of action by which technology and procedures are uniformly implemented throughout the organization. And the key takeaway here is security standards are also mandatory compliance requirement. It has to be implemented within organization. Moving on, security baseline. The baseline defines a minimum level of security that every system throughout the organization must comply with. So the baseline establishes a basic foundational secure state on which all additional and more tailored or stringent security controls can be added. So baselines are usually system specific and follow benchmarks such as Center for Internet Security CIS benchmark, uh, United States Government Configuration Baseline, USGCB, Security Technical Implementation Guide, the STIG, and so on. Uh, and also if you want to relate it back to the RMF, baselines are usually the minimum security controls that should be selected after the categorization step right so for instance if you have a server right there is always a benchmark or a baseline requirement that specify the minimum hardening of the server that is required for all servers being implemented within the organization all right so moving on security procedure this is the document that provides detailed step-by-step -step processes on how to comply with the policies and standards. The purpose of a procedure is to ensure the integrity of business processes. They must be updated as the hardware and the software of the system evolve. If the procedure is followed in the implementation of tax, it means that the tax follow policies and 
standard that is the in compliance so the procedure will be based off the policies and the standards the key takeaway point here is security procedures are mandatory compliance requirement these are very very important especially for those who are taking the cissp examination you see some of these uh, questions try to test your knowledge of which of these security documentation is a mandatory compliance requirement which are not mandatory compliance requirement security guideline this is the document that provides general guidance on issues such as what to do in a particular circumstances the document is not required to be met that is, it is not a compulsory or it's not a requirement but it is strongly recommended and the key takeaway point here is security guidelines are not mandatory requirements. So this diagram kind of summarizes everything that we talked about or the security documentation hierarchy within our organization. So whatever framework that we are following, if you're following the ISO 27000 series or the NIST 800 series, in this case, the 53, the COBIT, the PCI DSS, whatever framework you are, you are following or your organization is following, the framework will determine the policy requirement that management will put forth. And then this policy will enable the middle management to determine what kind of standards will best fit these policies that the upper management wants implemented. So again, the standard here will comprise of what? The baseline standard, the information disposal standard, encryption standards. These are some of the examples of the standard within the organization and maybe the hardware and the software standards, just like we talked about. And then the last one here is what? The procedure or the technical control. So this procedure, they are the, they are the step by step process that explain how to implement the policies and the standard. All right, so before I conclude this video, if you have an assignment to develop security policy, check out this website. I'll leave the link in the video description below. So for instance, this site here, the SANS website, security policy template. So you have various templates that you can leverage to complete your assignment. We have acceptable encryption policy, acceptable use policy, you know, going down clean decks policy, communication equipment policy. So to download any of this policy, you can download it in PDF or the Word doc form. So for instance, if I, if I open up this one here, all right, so you see, this is how it's gonna look. This is the template. You can actually modify this and come up with your own organization acceptable use policy. These sites are very, very important, especially when you have an assignment or a project to develop a security policy for your organization. Moving on. So again, I'll leave the link to this site in the video description below. You can take a look and see all the various policies that they have. Whichever policy you have the need for, you can download it and then modify it to your own organization specification. Moving on, let's look at the second website here. So this one too is from Security Studio, Information Security Policy Template. So you have various templates as well. The physical security template, risk management template, incident management, information classification and management template, information security committee templates, security training and awareness template. You have auditing, asset management template. Again, uh, acceptable use policy template, information security template. So when you click on this, you can actually see exactly what is going to be in the document. Everything is listed here. You can copy, paste, and you know change it to your organization specification. Or you can go all the way down and download a word version of this policy so you can modify it to your specification. This is very, very handy whenever you have a need for any project or any task to develop a security policy. All right, guys, that's it for this short video on IT security documentation and governance and their compliance requirement and the hierarchy within an organization. And also the policy templates website that you can leverage to come up with your own organization security policy. All right, guys, if you find this video useful, do like, share and subscribe. If you have not subscribed already, please do comment below and let me know your thought on this video. And I will see you in the next video.